Okay, so now I'm going to talk about sunlight and melatonin and how they are connected. So why do we need sunlight or full spectrum light and all the color wavelengths they contain? Um, well, when people don't get the color energies they need, um, there are a number of illnesses and imbalances that have been shown to occur or worsen. And I'm going to get into detail about the most, many of these. Um, insomnia, seasonal affective disorder, hyperactivity in children, PMS symptoms, obesity, as well as more serious diseases like cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and there are more. So we pretty much all know that all living things need sunlight to exist and thrive. Uh, plants need sunlight for photosynthesis, as we all learned in elementary school. And uh, oh, animal, wow. <laughs> animal behavioral patterns, hibernation and breeding are dictated by seasonal changes and available sunlight. And um, so hibernation, you know, um, and I don't know if you can see this really chubby squirrel, what he's saying. It says winter is coming, big deal. I am like so ready. <laughs> Which we've probably all seen, I mean, even here in Texas, as soon as fall starts coming, the squirrels, the squirrels um, sense the change in sunlight and the days are getting shorter, so they go into a non-stop feeding fren frenzy. And I've never seen one quite that fat, but <laughs> they get pretty close. Anyway, how does light affect melatonin in the biological clock? Um, okay, well, sunlight or artificial light um, whatever light source we're exposed to enters our eyes and reaches the pineal gland, which is that tiny little pine cone shaped um, node there. I don't know if you can see it in the dark here, but um, anyway, um, the pineal gland secretes the light sensitive hormone melatonin, which we've probably all heard of. Um, melatonin controls sleep cycles, appetite, body temperature, and a lot more. I mean, they're, they're still discovering things that it's linked with. Um, so in an ideal situation, you should have 100% production at night of melatonin because you need that to get sleepy, and it should drop to 10% during the daytime, so you should be wide awake during the day. Um, the importance of blue light. Okay, so here you see... Um, during the day in the middle of summer, like at noon, that's, the, that's when we get the most blue light. Otherwise, during the rest of the time, you know, late in the year or at dawn or dusk, the blue light tends to get scattered. And what we end up seeing is red, orange, yellow, which are the colors of sunset and dawn, dawn and dusk. Um, and the blue light ends up getting kind of scattered, so we don't, we don't get many of those rays. So, but again, here during the day, um, Full sunlight, full full on blue blue light. Um, so our bodies are actually sensitive to that. Um, and it uh, in 1998 they discovered a new photoreceptor in the eye that many of you may or may not have heard of that is different from the rods and cones, and it it's a photoreceptor that only detects blue light, and that was discovered at uh, Brown University. And in 2001, somebody who was doing research at the same time, specifically on the biological clock, um, found that uh, the most sensitive frequency or wavelength of blue light that the biological clock responds to is this 466 to 477 nanometers, which is equivalent to a clear blue sky. So you might be starting to make some connections. Um, so blue light inhibits melatonin production and sleepiness. So our re photoreceptors in our eyes are actually, oh, I'm seeing blue light, so I must be, it must be the middle of the day, so I should be wide awake. Um, and now, because of all the, the electronic devices, um, we're getting a lot more blue light than we should be getting. So now they now know that many illnesses are connected with low levels of melatonin or out of phase melatonin production, which is called delayed sleep phase syndrome. And that's basically when you are tired during the day and you can't go to sleep at night or you have a really hard time waking up in the morning, you can't go to sleep at night and then you have to get up and you have to go to work and you're just like sluggish for the first few hours. And anyway, that's delayed sleep phase syndrome because your whole body clock is kind of thrown off by several hours, but you can fix it. Mm. And one of the big <laughs> culprits for causing this is uh, too much blue light at night using your computer or your iPad watching television especially now with everybody using iPads because that light source is so close to our faces you're getting you're just getting you know overwhelmed with blue light and it's telling your body oh middle of the day I should be wide awake 
So it causes melatonin suppression and it results in insomnia, which then ends up causing a snowball effect and can cause all kinds of other problems, which we'll see here in a second. Um, even night lights can throw off melatonin production. So um, the as small as 200 lux can actually stop your melatonin. You can get, get up to use the restroom and it, even some night lights are actually blue light and that's the worst kind. Um, and also not getting enough uh, sunlight or full spectrum light during the daytime, which is when your body actually needs to get be getting all those color frequencies and the blue light. You're, you're, if you're stuck indoors and you're under fluorescent lights that don't have all the color frequencies, it, that also can throw off your whole biological clock. Um, so seasonal affective disorder and melatonin deficiency. A lot of you have probably heard of this by now. Um, it's been around, they've been talking about it for a long time. It's actually been doing, they've been doing research on this for 30 years now. And they've shown that um, bright full spectrum light um, in the past is what was always used. Now they're using just blue light, just in the last few years. Um, it treats seasonal affective disorder, which if you don't know what it is, it's a type of depression caused by lack of sunlight in the winter or um, when people live in cloudy climates and they don't get sunlight uh, and it produces, it causes low melatonin levels. Um, it also treats uh, delayed sleep phase syndrome. So just by getting the proper timing of the blue light during the day, you can completely get rid of your delayed sleep phase syndrome and feel wide awake and refreshed in the morning. Um, and it also boosts mood and productivity all year, especially in the winter. And I'll, g I'll get a little bit more into detail about this in a minute here. So, um, the, it proper, they, uh, probably a lot of you have heard about this where proper lighting in schools will, or in the workplace will increase productivity, it reduces AD, ADHD. The, the initial study on this w dates back to 1987. So again, a lot of this stuff has been around for a while and it just takes quite a while to get into the, you know, the consciousness of people and to be applied on a broader scale. And there are ways that we can apply them even more that they're already doing in Europe. They're, they're light years ahead of us, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> anyway, 1987, Dr. John Ott in the United States here uh, tested children in classrooms. They originally had cool white fluorescence and they demonstrated hyperactivity, irritability, attention deficits. He switched out the lights, those cool white fluorescents for, with full spectrum lighting. And within one month, there was a, um, a marked academic improvement, less hyperactivity, 33% fewer tooth decays, which seems like a random thing. Um, and now, since 2010, um, there are actually scientific studies that are going on in the UK right now, and one that was already conducted in Hamburg, Germany, using full spectrum adjustable lighting. So this is kind of where we should be going, and you know, ideally we'll have this in our homes and offices soon. And what they do is, in the morning, they use more blue light, so you've still got white light, but they amp up the blue light uh, portion of it. And they do that in the morning and the afternoon when people tend to have that dip after lunch. So, um, and when they did this, when they started doing this adjustable light, they found that reading speed increased by 35%. This is in the schools in Germany. <laughs> the number of errors fell 45% and restlessness and hyperactivity fell 77%, which is wow. huge. Um, since 2010, again, there are actually businesses in the Netherlands that are applying this um, in, their, in their offices. And they do the same thing. They turn up the bright light in the morning and in the afternoon. And at other times, it kind of, um, they use different lighting. And basically, they don't have to, they don't have to know, you know how to adjust it. There are four settings on the, on the light panel and it's standard energy for, so when you want more energy, when you want to be able to focus and concentrate and calm. So more research that's going on here in the United States. This one is at UCSD Women's Mood Disorders Research Clinic. Dr. Barbara Perry in 2010 um, was making connections between PMS and melatonin deficiency. And so he, she found that women with severe premenstrual syndrome, um, PMS and PMDD, which is a very, very severe form of it, have lower levels of me melatonin throughout their menstrual cycle. 
And when they're treated with two hours of bright full spectrum light in the evening, which is very different from being treated, treating um, delayed sleep phase disorder, which you want to treat in the morning, um, it, they have a complete reversal of the PMS and depression symptoms. And Dr. Perry believes that there's some, there's some kind of um, reason that this is connected to serotonin. Serotonin is the precursor to melatonin. Um, so if you don't have enough serotonin in your body, you can't make enough melatonin. Um, anyway. Okay, so the latest melatonin research, and again, anytime I have an asterisk next to these things, if there's something more that you want to know, because I'm going to go through a num like a bunch of diseases right now, and <laughs> not get into a lot of detail, uh, just jot it down and let me know after the talk. So reduced production of melatonin has been linked with breast cancer, uh, cancer, obesity, estrogen levels and fertility issues, diabetes and heart disease. As far as breast cancer goes, uh, again, in other countries, they're aware of the links between um, certain illnesses and living in work conditions. And the Danish government actually is compensating women now um, who, work, who are shift workers or flight attendants who develop breast cancer because they've now classified shift work as an industrial hazard. So it, yes, and it, uh, you can just imagine it, the whole delayed sleep phase syndrome and how it throws off your melatonin production and breast cancer is one type of cancer that's been directly linked with that. They've also linked a number of other types of cancer. There are lots of studies going on. They know that, they, they do know that just having the right amount of melatonin in your body with somebody that has cancer completely slows down the cancer growth. And as soon as they, they um, deplete that amount of melatonin, the cancer speeds up. Yeah. So direct link there. And they also know that melatonin is a very powerful antioxidant. And again, there's lots of research going on about all of this. So um, obesity, carb craving, we saw earlier that melatonin is responsible for, for food um, um, appetite and that sort of thing. Uh, so I'm not gonna get into a lot of detail about those other ones right now. Um, it's also connected with brain-related disorders. Autism, um, blue light therapy has been found effective for some children with autism for re reducing hyperactivity and that sort of thing. Bipolar disorder, there are lots of studies going on about this. Um, they found that just the, the simple act of using dark therapy, um, which is no light at the proper time, having an, enough hours of complete darkness where the, they're wearing a mask at night and sleeping. It's not like they're wearing this during the day. It's like just at night, they shouldn't have any light. Um, and regular sleep hours every day uh, and no blue light at night completely stops the bipolar cycling. It's pretty amazing. And um, they've also linked this with Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. Um, the, the one, another thing that they know is that lack of sleep reduces brain cell production. So when you're not getting enough sleep, which is often what's happening again with in, at any number of these melatonin imbalances, uh, your, your, your brain's not regenerating its cells like it should be. Um, obviously insomnia, can't sleep. Jet lag, most people know that when you go to a different time zone, you get jet lag. It's actually pretty easy to get back on a, like your regular time clock very quickly by using a blue light device. And uh, they're portable, they're very small. Uh, melatonin supplements are not recommended uh, because of all the other problems that they can cause and you have to get the timing just right for when you're taking them. And anytime you're taking artificial hormones, you're kind of like messing with mother nature anyway. So it's really, when you can have something that's so natural and easy and inexpensive, light therapy is better because that's how the body is, you know, en engineered to respond. Um, so how can we restore healthy melatonin levels? Uh, Dr. Jacob Lieberman, again, this is old, you know, information, light medicine of the future in 1991. He was talking about getting, getting enough natural sunlight exposure during the day for natural sleep cycle and melatonin production. You actually have to be out in the sun without wearing sunscreen. I mean, on your face, you can wear it because the, um, the amount of skin area that you're going to get exposure is so small so you want to make sure you're not getting sun damage from uva but and you're not actually needing to spend a lot of time out in the sun without sunscreen um so you, and we already know that sunlight is also very uh, useful and necessary for producing vitamin d for the uvb um and again no sunscreen you can't your body won't produce the um, the vitamin d if you've got sunscreen that's blocking the the color rays and the uvb um, and for more information on specifics about 
the fact that where we are even in Austin in the winter time we don't get enough we don't get enough UVB because of the angle of the sun so then it's recommended to if take vitamin D supplements um, and another way that you can restore healthy melatonin levels is to install full spectrum lighting in your home and office which is another easy fix those are pretty pretty prevalent now uh, the latest research, again, about blue light is showing you really need to eliminate your blue light sources one to three hours before bedtime. So if you have an iPad, either the, you can actually get overlays that will cut out the blue light, that you can buy glasses, amber glasses that will neutralize the blue light frequencies, so you, you're not going to be absorbing that. Um, and but it's really best to not be using that stuff anyway because it's stimulating your brain too <laughs> besides all that and uh so no ipad smartphone or computer one to three hours before bedtime don't leave your tv on in your bedroom don't use night lights or if you have to use them then use amber because that doesn't doesn't um trigger the the blue light response as much or i mean it doesn't trigger the blue light response but it doesn't doesn't wake you up either um the, there's a program, a free program, which I have on all of my computers. Uh, it's called F period LUX. And the URL is not F period LUX.com. If you just Google F period LUX, it's a, it's a free program. And what it does is it installs on your computer. It works great. And as it, 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 it's tied in with your clock, so it knows, OK, now I know, OK, what time zone you're in and what time it is. And it starts to, at desk, it starts to reduce the blue light. So your screen gets noticeably, but really nice. It's a very soft kind of shift. And it becomes like this pinkish, orangey kind of color. But you wouldn't even, it doesn't change anything that dramatically. It's really very subtle, but it's very soothing. So you, you can feel it immediately, as soon as you, especially if you install it at night. And you can see the shift from, from the blue light that was just you know, keeping you wide awake to this nice, soothing, calming light. Anyway, it's free. <coughs> Who made it? What's that? Who made that? Oh, it's who made I don't know, but you can find out when you go to their website. Um, uh, and using a blue light therapy device during the day is very easy to do. There are a number of them on the market. 